Well, first I'll address green hydrogen and second, what are the uses of the green hydrogen and what are the most, then third, what are the most efficient uses of production versus using it uh, to help balance a grid? Um, well, first green hydrogen is hydrogen produced from electricity that's green electricity, namely wind, water, solar, we'll call it that. And so that's the only way we actually advocate for using hydrogen or producing hydrogen is green hydrogen. So not brown hydrogen, which is steam reforming of natural gas or uh, any other type of natural gas production of hydrogen, not blue hydrogen, which is, is basically brown hydrogen plus carbon capture, not other types of hydrogen from fossil fuels. Um, second, what are the applications of hydrogen? Well, the ones that are useful are for long distance transport, like long distance aircraft, meaning 1500 kilometers or longer, long distance ships, you know, long distance trains and trucks. For passenger vehicles, however, it's much more efficient to have battery electric vehicles because even though you can make green hydrogen just almost as clean as battery electric vehicle, because the only emissions coming out of a hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle is water vapor, it's you need about three times the number of wind turbines or two and a half to three times the number of wind turbines to drive an electric passenger vehicle the same distance as a battery electric passenger vehicle. So it's just not that efficient because you just have more efficiency losses in producing and consuming the hydrogen for uh, in a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. However, the heavier and longer distance that a vehicle goes, uh, the more you end up, the battery electric vehicle becomes less efficient because it's just carrying around more batteries to go that extra distance and you're just using energy to carry around the battery. So at some point, the hydrogen fuel cell vehicles become more efficient because of hydrogen storage is, is weighs less than battery storage past a certain point. And so that's why long distance trucks, namely trucks that are like semi trucks going, uh, you know, a thousand kilometers, maybe 1100 kilometers or longer, it's more efficient to have uh, hydrogen fuel cell electric, shorter distance, more efficient to have battery electric, battery electric. Same with aircraft, less than 1500 kilometers, battery electric's more efficient, more, longer than 1500 kilometers, hydrogen fuel cell is more efficient. In any case, so that's one application. A second application is steel production. You know, right now steel is produced from pure iron, but you get the pure iron, taking iron ore and purifying it to iron, pure iron, by trying to removing the oxygen. And you remove the oxygen right now by combining it with carbon to make carbon dioxide that gets released to the air. So there's a lot of carbon dioxide during steel production, but instead you can react iron ore with hydrogen and you'll end up getting uh, water and you can take the oxygen out that way. And that purifies iron without any carbon, especially if it's green hydrogen. And in fact, there's a steel plant in uh, Sweden now that does that. And this process is you can remove 98% of all carbon emissions from steel just with the green hydrogen process. And they've done that in Sweden. Now, I think all the plants in Sweden or steel plants are gonna be converted because this first demo plant has been found to be so efficient. A third application is ammonia. I mean, ammonia right now is already produced from hydrogen, but it's, it's from gray hydrogen mostly. And so we just switched that to green hydrogen. So those are the three main applications that hydrogen are, is useful for long distance transport, steel production, ammonia production. One more could be remote microgrids combined electricity and heat. Because when you use, you know, in a remote microgrid, you're far from, you know, you're not connected to the grid. Let's say you're far north in the snow. And I mean, you could use batteries for both electricity and heat, but, uh, you know, if you have to store energy for, several weeks, you either need a lot of batteries uh, or you need storage tanks. And at some point storage tanks from hydrogen are more efficient. But anyway, when you run hydrogen through a fuel cell, you can generate both electricity and heat. And if you capture that heat, you can use that heat in the microgrid. But hydrogen is not very useful for stationary electricity storage for grids. And well, I mean, you can do, you can do it, use it for grid electricity grid electricity, but again, batteries are more efficient if you're just using the hydrogen fuel cells uh, for electricity storage, because just the energy required to produce the hydrogen, compress it, 
and store it and then use it in a fuel cell, uh, those efficiencies, when you add them up, uh, it's much less efficient to do that than just to run electricity into a battery and out of a battery. So you just save a lot more energy by using batteries for stationary electricity storage. Uh, okay, so you don't want to use hydrogen either for passenger vehicles, stationary electricity storage, and third, you don't want to use it for building heat. And this is what a lot of the natural gas industry is proposing is to use hydrogen to burn it instead of natural gas or with natural gas, mix it with natural gas and pipelines, send it to buildings and burn it. That's completely inefficient. It's much more efficient to use electric heat pumps, which use one fourth the energy as even natural gas heaters. Uh, and it also provide air conditioning and also are, are just, just so much more efficient. So uh, whether or not, okay, so the question is whether you should use these wind farms for hydrogen production. Well, so actually I looked at this uh, issue recently in a lot of detail. And when you combine hydrogen production for any of these purposes I mentioned, transport, long distance transport, ammonia or steel, and you use extra excess electricity from wind or solar, let's say you have 100% wind, water, solar grid, you're gonna have hours of the year where you have too much electricity. And then you'll have a lot of hours where you don't have enough electricity. And then you'll have hours where you have just enough. So when you have too much electricity, there are three things you can do with it. You can just store the electricity in batteries. You can convert that electricity to heat and store the heat, or you can produce hydrogen. So if you produce hydrogen with some of that excess electricity, you can actually cheapen the, uh, you can reduce the cost of keeping the grid stable. Uh, because let's say, let's say you didn't have any of those methods. Right now, if you have 100% renewable grid, when you have extra electricity, it just gets wasted, right? So nothing, it's not used for anything. And so the cost of electricity goes up. But if you use it, that extra electricity, some of it for hydrogen production, uh, then you're basically, that's free electricity that would otherwise have been wasted. So you can reduce the cost of producing that hydrogen. And so I've calculated that it's about, you know, if you actually use, produce hydrogen about 30% of the hours of the year, which corresponds to a portion of, well, anywhere from 15 to 30%. So it's not even a majority, 15 to 30% of the hours of the year, which is some of the hours that you have excess electricity, you're actually, you can reduce the overall cost of energy quite a bit compared mm -hmm. with just wasting that electricity. So there is an advantage of combining hydrogen with wind, but you don't want to do it 24 seven. Sure. You want to use that wind primarily for um, generating grid electricity for the community and you'd use right. it to produce hydrogen basically when you have too much of it. 